This chapter starts a completely different topic uh, of Gauss's law, and you probably haven't seen the concept of Gauss's law before, so it's very important to try to put it in context and explain why we're doing what we're going to do. So let's look at the big picture of electricity and magnetism, the, the process, how things work, how it describes how the process works. The, pro the idea is that charges produce fields. We have electric and magnetic fields. And these fields can propagate in space. And then, when you put a charge in a region where there's an electric or magnetic field, it'll experience a force. This three-step process is basically what all electricity and magnetism is about. And it turns out that there are four equations, called Maxwell's equations, that completely determine these two aspects. And there's one equation, the Lorentz force law, that completely determines what the force is on a charge when you place it in a field. And so these four equations then have a very high importance in the field of electricity and magnetism because everything about the way charges produce fields and how fields propagate in space is determined by these four equations. You've taken before, so far, Coulomb's law and how to get the electric field uh, using the relation kq over r squared. Now the important note to make is that this equation is only valid when the charges are fixed in space. If you put a charge and you fix it in space, you can use this equation. But if the charges are moving, for instance, arbitrarily, in any kind of motion, this equation no long, is no longer correct. So it's a very limited equation. Now, the equations that are always correct, which are Maxwell's equations, I'm going to just put here. Don't get alarmed by this slide. It has a lot of information, but I just want the idea to be clear. This equation, called Gauss's law, this equation, Ampere's law, this equation, Faraday's law, this equation, Gauss's law for magnetism. We're going to study these in detail during the semester. The important point here is that these equations are always correct, meaning that if, w however the charges are moving in your problem, they always, these four equations are always correct. So that's why they have very central importance in electricity and magnetism. We're going to study in this chapter Gauss's law. So it's one of those four equations that's always correct. So we just mentioned we're going to study Gauss's law. This is the mathematical form of which Gauss's law is written. And as we said, it's always correct. And meaning always correct that it's always, no matter how charges are moving in space or any kind of situation, it's always valid. The equation always works. One thing to notice about this equation, that area has a vector sign on it. And this is maybe something strange that you haven't seen before, so we're going to have to deal with this and explain what we mean by area being a vector. Also, the combination of the electric field dotted into area, this combination of terms, maybe you haven't seen before, it's given, the people give it a name, it's called electric flux, and we're going to start to see how to understand it, how to calculate it for particular problems. Now, another reason why Gauss's law is important, other than the fact that it's always correct, the equation is always correct, is that you can solve to get the electric field if you have symmetry in a problem. For instance, if you have a problem with spherical symmetry, or cylindrical symmetry, or infinite plane symmetry, you can actually use Gauss's law to calculate the electric field. That doesn't mean that Gauss's law is wrong if you don't have symmetry. It's always correct. We said it's always correct. But the thing is, the question is, can you use Gauss's law to get the electric field directly from Gauss's law? You can only do that when you have certain symmetry. And we're going to study in this chapter how, why does this symmetry allow us to get calculate the electric field uh, using Gauss's law.